Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm doing an experiment. Um, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, I've just bought myself this little uh, Samyang macro lens, 100mm f2.8, and it's a completely manual lens. And it cost me about 350, I think it was, pounds to buy it. And I've been very, 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 very impressed with it, to say the least. And one thing that I found that it's uh, I'd not really anticipated, um, especially if using it macro, is just how narrow the depth of field is. Um, so it goes 2.8 to f32, but at 2.8, anything under a foot is probably a depth of field of millimetres. So I thought what I'll do is I'll set the, the camera up on a tripod, as in here, and I'll run the builder's tape measure along the wall and I'll be able to actually see in real terms what the depth of field actually is. And what I've done is I've taken a series of shots which I'll put up in a moment and I've moved these three little pencils. So the middle one is the point I've actually focused on and the two others are the, the point at which uh, the camera loses the ability to see that as in focus. Because uh, I've got focus peaking on my Sony and as a result I can see where the red peters out along the scale of the um, the actual ruler and it's, it's been quite interesting. Um, I hadn't appreciated just how narrow the depth of field is at 2.8 but um, I'll take you around the back of the camera and I'll actually show you the process and then I'll show you the results. Okay I've got the, uh, the camera currently pointing at the three foot mark on the, the ruler and it's focusing, you can see the red highlights on there indicating where it's focused and it's currently at f2.8 and virtually there's apart from the red marks which are the uh, the focus box the red which is the highlights actually is uh, incredibly small area it's probably only four or five millimeters around the three foot mark so if you watch here as I turn the focus uh, the aperture ring along you can see it's growing and if I slowly turn it right around until we get to f32 you can see it's probably got about four or five inches worth of depth of field there, which is not a lot. Um, and I'm quite surprised how narrow that is, even at f32, but that's, that screen's gone dead. That appears to be what it is. Um, so I've done a series of shots, which I've already uh, processed, or at least I've already taken, and I'm going to actually put them up and I'm going to talk you through the different effects that I'm seeing, because Quite honestly, I'm quite surprised just how narrow that depth of field is, even at f32. Um, and it might explain why some of the macro shots I've got are virtually unusable, because I'm focused on an object which is three-dimensional, and uh, there's such a small flame, uh, frame which is actually in focus. So focus stacking is the order of the day, obviously, moving forwards. Thank you. 
sun's just going behind a cloud so I'm not flaring on the camera so much and I'll stand in a bit of shade over here. Um, yeah, I, I really am quite surprised with that. I've taken, um, I started at about a foot away from the camera and then I went along the tape measure one foot, three feet and then six feet I think it was. And the further away from the camera I got, the, the greater the depth of field for any given aperture, which is good. But the converse is also true, the nearer the object is to the camera, the narrower the depth of field is, which I suppose makes sense in the scheme of things, but getting down to the order of even at f32, 10 or 12 millimetres, something like that, is not going to make it very easy to uh, take many shots that have got all, all of the image in focus front to back. So I'm certain focus stacking is going to be absolutely essential, which then means I've got to have the tripod with me because I won't be able to hold the camera still enough to be able to even start to get that right. And the other point of it is handheld. You can't really do macro really close easily because you only need to move very slightly forward or backwards and your focus point's moving with it and you've then got to refocus to get it correct. So I'm going to process those images and I'll, uh, I'll put them up and uh, talk you through it. Let's see what we've got. Okay, here we are in Lightroom and um, I've imported all the images I took along the bottom ribbon here and you can see that when I'm very close in on the actual um, tape measure, this uh, was taken, well, these first four pictures were taken with the camera about two foot away from the end of the tape measure. So it's not exactly macro at this point and you can see this is the one inch mark that I focused on and very few of the marks either side are completely crisp. I would say there's probably only quarter of an inch of, um, there's half inch there, that's quarter of an inch. I'd say quarter of an inch either side of the point I focused on is usable and everything else is too blurry. That was 2.8. This one is f8 and I'm still, I still haven't changed the focus point, it's still the one inch mark but now we're getting through to probably one and three quarters maybe, one and seven eighths ish um, with usable image detail. The next image is at f16 and we really only start to lose the quality of the image at about three and a half inches, maybe three and three quarters. And then at f32 the image is perfectly usable up to, uh, bear in mind there's a piece of plastic tape over the, the ruler here so it's actually having a slight effect on the clarity of the image. But I would say that's probably usable to about four and three quarter images or four and three quarter inches. Now I'll move straight on and skip these intermediate ones because they were all taken with the camera about two foot from the end of the uh, the lens, or so the lens only two foot from the end of the tape measure. but. On this image, what I did was I got the camera to about five, five inches from the lens, or probably slightly less, and I focused again what I thought was on the one inch mark, but it isn't. It's obviously focused here. And look, it's tiny. These are, I think, 30, uh, are they sixteenths? Sixteenths of an inch. And there's only really one that's perfectly in focus, and then three either side, well, two, one side and one the other. I think the focus point's about there. Um, but what this proves to me is the fringing, the red fringing I could see on the viewfinder and in the um, rear display on the camera indicates quite a lot more of this actually constitutes in focus. And I found that because when I've tried focusing with it manually, um, I've as soon as it's gone red, I try to get it at the peak of the red fringing and sometimes it's not quite there and that's obvious in the image quality and that 
is borne out here as well because only the point that the maximum sort of um, amount of red fringing happens at is the point you're focused on and you can see that's incredibly tiny at f2.8 so if we now look at f8 we've got probably this point here as the one or very close to it that's perfectly in focus and then maybe two or three either side of that which are also acceptable so moving on to the f16 image and obviously still this is the main focus point but we're actually getting to the point we're nearly just past an inch um, at the inch mark here still acceptable and down nearly to the half inch mark which is approximately here um, a fraction over the half inch mark this one probably so in total we've still only got less than half an inch of total area that's in focus um, or acceptable focus and then we'll go to f32 and we're pushing out into about an inch and a quarter um, probably fractionally more but round about this area uh, it's losing quality quite rapidly after that and then it's strangely it's bear in mind we're focused on approximately this part of the image it's the nearer focus is actually better the it seems to have extended towards the camera more and i haven't changed the focus point at this point so that's all really quite interesting um, i now have learned that basically any macro photography i do will have to be on a tripod it'll have to be at a relatively small aperture which in places like woodlands where it's dark anyway will mean some quite long exposures and hopefully no movement happens um, and it also means that I've got to be very careful with how I use the focus magnifier in um, in my Sony because it's a little bit lying it's suggesting something's acceptably in focus where it isn't so I'll have to watch that anyway um, I hope you found that all quite interesting um, I enjoyed making this it was a bit of fun and um, I suppose I'm not really teaching anyone anything new I, I suspect most photographers know what it is I'm talking about here but it was just an interesting experiment just to sort of get my hands on the lens and get more familiar with exactly how to get the best out of it anyway thanks for watching <laughs>